Yeah, it's time to welcome in attorney Franz Borghardt. What's happening, man? Another day, another segment. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. How are you? I'm doing very well. How about yourself? I'm all seersuckered up. Is it seersucker? I think it is. No, it's just, it, I mean, it's it's got a, it's got the pattern, but not the uh, it's stitching. Not the, it's, it's not the stitching. It's not Haspel, okay? No. It's not, this is, I don't even know what this, uh, why am I even wearing something that's not Haspel? I, I don't, don't know. know. Good morning, guys. Good morning, Eladra. Um, we got a couple different things to cover uh, today. You were on court TV talking about AI. I, um, I've done that before. Yes. It's, um, the uh, I want to dive the into that a little bit later. AI and deep fakes. Deep fakes, and I want to talk about defending yourself uh, when those uh, come at you because it feels like it's impossible. Uh, we'll get to that a little bit later on. Uh, we'll start off though with Cats settling their lawsuit. A former high-ranking official with Cats settled his lawsuit with the Baton Rouge bus system Tuesday, months after his firing following a leaked drug test showing that he had tested positive for. Mm, math. <laughs> the legal battle started last year after a series. Uh, skip all the part about WBRZ. A, a series of reports from WBRZ's investigative unit on former Cats comptroller John Catrone. Or is it Catrone or Catroni? Catroni. Catroni. Uh, Catroni's lawyer had argued that he should not have been subject to random testing because he was not in a safety sensitive position. Uh, Franz, when it comes down to it, does it matter that he shouldn't have been tested in the first place? Well, it does. Once you're guilty, once you're. Once you've failed the test, does it matter that, whoa, 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 whoa. It doesn't matter that he failed. He should have never been tested. Well, well, his attorney argues, she argues that it was a false positive. Just, just, that's in the article. It's in the article. No, no. Um, I, I think, I think it does matter in the sense that somebody from Katz leaked the test. Mm hmm Which, by the way, not okay. Mm. Not okay. Sure. Um, well. You say sure. You and I are paying for this. Mm -hmm. No yeah. one at Cats is, it's not like they're going to Cats and saying, hey, Tim, hey, Bob, pull out the wallets. We're going to chip in on this one. You and I are going to pay for it mm -hmm. because someone got excited over at Cats and decided, hey, we're going to leak out this drug test. Somebody exc got excited at Cats that the person in charge of all the money popped positive for a meth test. True, but there's a different way of going about this than the leaking it to the media. I get real, I'm sorry. I get really pissed. I'm going to use that word. I get pissed when people leak things to the media, specifically things that should never be leaked to the media, positive drug screens. Yeah. But but again, no, no, again all things we, we as the public, we who have to pay for this on a daily basis, well, have no right to know if our tax dollars are in the hands of somebody who's popping positive you, from meth. You have a right to know no, if well, he's well, terminated. If he's terminated, you have a right to know that he is terminated. All right. But in this right. but in this case, the leaking mm -hmm. led led to the question of you asked the question, no, it does it matter whether or not he should or shouldn't be tested? Well, yeah, it kind of does. From a legal standpoint, if you're not supposed to be tested in your job position and they require you to have a test, and then they leak the test, which may be a false positive, mm -hmm. yeah, it kind of matters a little bit. Financially, he's getting some money. Now, look, we don't know what the, the payout is, right? It could be a hundred bucks. Yeah, I suspect it's gonna be I suspect this settlement was significant. Okay. And the, the last line of the story says terms of the settlement were not immediately made public uh, because that is, and, you know, if anything should be made public, it should be that because that is the definition of what we're paying for. I mean, that that's where the settlement comes from, right? Well, do you want to know what the settlement was? Do you want to know as a citizen? Yeah, a little bit. A little bit. You want little to know bit. how much these well, paid out? So uh, a couple things I want to know. First of all, if it was a false positive. Which, by the way, I'll... All argument aside, mm -hmm. that does happen. That is the thing. There For are meth, a lot. No, no, no. There is a drug test can be a false positive. Sure. If you believe that it's a false positive, I'm giving you the I'm giving you the system here. If I have a client and he tests positive for meth and he's like, dude, I really wasn't using meth, mm -hmm. we would then go and get a hair follicle, a secondary test to see if it's still accurate. And by the way, a hair follicle test is a longer duration test. In terms of the history of that person, what do you do with you? I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. What do you do with somebody who's got like no hair? Uh, that was just mean. <laughs> that, that was just. I'm like trying to have a legal conversation about analysis here. There's hair all over this body. Point being, whoa. There, point being is, if you had a secondary test that was inconsistent with the first test, mm -hmm. that would affect the reliability of the first test, right? Right. So, so that is a thing. Testing false positive testing is a thing that does happen okay yeah now that being said 
there, there's always more to the story, which is what we're going to have to pick up after we check news because it's time for us to check our news, traffic, and weather. He's attorney Franz Borghardt. We do legally serve every Wednesday at this time, and that'll continue next. It's 6.30. You know the, the – oh, did I wait the right amount of time there? The, you know the funny thing about this is? What? I'm not exactly sympathetic to this guy. I'm just pissed off about the leaking of the, of the drug test. Like, I don't disagree with you fundamentally that somebody no, but, somebody that's popping meth or using meth probably but shouldn't be ahead of cats. Pop, you can use meth. You can use meth all sorts of ways. Whoever's using meth probably shouldn't be in charge of cats. And that cats is being run by someone who may be using meth explains a whole bunch, right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, I never saw it. I grew up with the Johnny Depp version. It looks funny. I've seen clips on on uh, TikTok or whatever, where, yeah, yeah, and Channing Tatum just walks all around the whole department. Oh, I'm gonna shit. say something that's not gonna be. Mm-hmm. Ice Cube's great. You're going to say something that what, Franz? I liked Jonah Hill a lot better before he became a victim. He's a victim of what? Oh, uh, Jonah Hill now has become this, like, like, size-shaming. I love his acting. I love his com comic um, performances. He's just become this, like, don't shame my body. Like, I, don't, I just don't. Yeah, I don't. I've never even thought about No one ever did. And I don't think anybody ever did. I think he was the one who was having issues with that. I love super bad. I never had a choice. <laughs> hey, we're blood brothers. <laughs> That's a very good movie. It's a very good movie. Yeah. Well, Galen, I'm going to pose a question to you based on that comment. Would cats have settled? Would cats have settled on this if the answer to your question was no? Would cats have settled just based on the, hey, this guy shouldn't have been tested and leaked part? Because that does have a value to it. That does have a value. Like, even if he tested positive, the question of, well, you leaked it and affected him, there, there is a, a financial component to that. I don't know the answer to that. I'm just a, I'm just a criminal defense attorney. I'm just a caveman. What's a good '90s song? Limp Biscuit. <laughs> That's early 2000s. How about um, what's the Nirvana spinoff band? Nirv when Nirvana broke up, the uh, Foo Fighters. Foo Fighters. I could do some Foo Fighters. That was the wrong way of saying it. That that video with the hand, the, the guy. So I. Finished up my last law school class today, teaching, yeah. and my students, one of them said, hey, my dad is your age. I was like, oh, oh. 44. They're like in their 20s. Yes, Dara. Old man and bald fronds. No hair. 
No hair analysis. Going to, I was asking a legitimate question. I I'm, wasn't taking I'm, a shot. I'm going to Mercy after this for the prayer vigil, for the rosary vigil, for the grill. Yeah. I, never, I didn't know her. Like, Well, both her and her husband have done acts. So. Well, I figured it's a good thing to just Jonathan show up. Was a, Jonathan was not quite that. I like, I like a good rosary. I mean, I can be a warm body out there. Kill the mics for a second. Get a look at that Wednesday forecast. Here is WBRZ meteorologist Marissa Nuzzo. <laughs> 637 Talk 1073 FM WBRP. Mornings with Brian Haldane rolling right along. Attorney Franz Borghardt in for legally served as he is every Wednesday. Franz making the argument that it doesn't matter if you're guilty of a crime if that crime should have never been discovered in the first place. Is it's that not, about is that accurate, Franz? I mean Is that where we were heading into the break? I mean, pilot, what is truth? It's so well, so wait, to be fair, mm -hmm. I live in a world where if you don't dot your I's and cross your T's, no, you don't get convicted of a crime. No, I know. I know. I'm sorry we don't like Which, that. I know. No, I mean, it, like it, I've said before. Look, I'm sorry the crime rate is what it is right now, and I'm yeah. sorry there's so many recidivists out on the streets right now. That's don't just... hate the player, hate the game. If you don't like it, get some votes together, change the Constitution. Would love to. You know? Would love to. Um. So a lot of what we're talking about here with uh, this is the uh, former comptroller for Katz. Uh, the uh, story is that Katz has settled the lawsuit. Now, there are bigger questions to be asked here, like why was somebody given the drug test when they're not supposed to be on that drug test list? What were they sniffing around for in the first place? Well, the sniffer, were they looking it, to set him up for something? So do companies, was, do companies drug test when they're sniffing around or they just do it randomly? I don't know the answer to that. Yeah, I don't know either. Now, if, I don't know either, but that was the speculation in one of the original stories was if we go back to December of last year where he first filed the lawsuit, part of that story says uh, Jill Kraft, his lawyer, says retaliation against him began when Catroni began noticing discrepancies tied to money. These were reported, and then he was given a drug test. So Jill Kraft says this, the drug test in and of itself was a retaliation. Now, false positive for methamphetamine, I, look, I don't know enough about drug tests to know how frequent that happens. And most of the drug tests you see where they're false positives. It, does, it, does it matter what type of drug it's a false positive for? I mean, is this so, a matter of two samples got mixed up in the lab? So the question becomes, was there a secondary confirmation test? If there was a secondary confirmation test and he tests positive for meth twice, right? Well, then that's a different conversation. Correct. If it's and by the way, so we're clear as head of cats, he's not the one driving he's like the head. He's the comptroller. Yeah, but he's not the one driving the buses, right? Literally. What? But if you're handling millions yes, of taxpayers' he is dollars, the one, don't make it sound like that makes uh, it better. I'm just that saying. Doesn't make it better, Franz. I, I'm just saying. So we're clear. Look, you know how well run cats is. And that, but that's part of this story, by the way. That is a big part of this story. Is if there weren't so many folks sniffing around cats to begin with, if there weren't so many things wrong with cats to begin with, would this even be 
a part of the story. One of our listeners, Brian, says, for cause testing is the thing, workers' comp carriers often push companies to do so. I don't have a problem for, I don't have a problem with the company saying, hey, Haldane's acting a little erratic lately. Maybe we should, like, test him. Mm -hmm. If that is something they normally do within the course and scope of his employment, that he has is subject to random drug testing. I also, if the policy is in the company, hey, when you get employed here, if you test positive for meth, we're going to blow it up. We're going to give it to the news. We're going to ruin your reputation. So you may want to consider that before you use meth while on the job. Okay. I don't have a problem with that either. What's, what's interesting here is, and I'll go full circle, is if it were a false positive test, and I leave room for the possibility that it is, if it was a false positive test and they leaked a false positive test, that man absolutely should get some money. Follow-up question, though, who's responsible for the follow-up test? Because if I test positive and I know it's a false positive, my butt's going right back to the drug testing center and every other drug right. testing center getting my own independent tests saying, no, 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 I'm not relying on them. Right. They're retaliating right. for something else. I've got lab results from an independent ba test that will tell you uh, the opposite. Based on what I know of this case, I believe he himself went and got an independent test. Which, of course, if you're the company, you say, well, that's great. Why don't you come do our independent test as well? Mm -hmm. Right? If I'm lawyering for the company, if I'm lawyering for cats, I'm like, hey, but, hey, hey, Catroni, that's great. Give us a copy of your, your test, and we're going to get you to do an independent one at, as well. And that way we'll have three tests. Sure. And we'll look at it all. Sure. But, of course, this isn't a problem. This doesn't get to be a payout if you don't leak test number one to WBRZ. So here's – but. My issue with the lack of a follow-up test, okay, from the December 29th story, right, with uh, from WBRC as well. In January, Catroni was given a random drug test and failed. His lawyer says the failure was a false positive for methamphetamine. Catroni's lawyer, Jill Kraft, alleges her client should have never been given a random drug test because he is not in a safety-sensitive position. She made the same argument you did. Right. He's not actually driving riders. He's just handling millions of your dollars. That's, it's like I mean, a kid. He's like Alec Baldwin playing with the gun on the set. Wow. <laughs> Any Hoosers. I thought that was. Uh, eh. But wouldn't your answer if you're Jill Kraft be it was a false positive? We know I, because we I, took follow-up tests. I it might, was a false positive. I might from and a, here's the proof to show it. I might lead if I were Jill on this one. I might lead with not only should he not have been tested, but we got our own independent testing. Boom. Right. From a marketing PR standpoint, from mm -hmm. a damage control standpoint, I'd be like, hey, Chris, here it is. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't even, I wouldn't be, I mean, like, here, Chris, here's a copy of it. Okay. My comparison with the he never should have been tested thing is, is very similar to, let's say you've got two people in a relationship, and one of them thinks the other one's cheating on them. So they read the other person's text messages, and they find out they've been cheating on them. And the person who's doing the cheating says, you should have never read my texts in the first place, and gets all indignant. That's the comparison I have I believe there. there's a term. You shouldn't have read my text in the first I, place. I believe. You still did wrong. I believe there's a phrase for that kind of reversal of emotional terrorism. I believe there is a a a a, a term for that, but we'll, that's another conversation for another day. Yeah. You get where I'm going with this. It shouldn't be. You're wrong, so make a right. Yes, exactly. Right. So show me your innocence on the drug test. So here's the question. Mm -hmm. If he gets five thousand dollars in a settlement, yeah, he's got to. Uh, but just but hear me out on this one. If he gets five thousand dollars, we're like, okay, whatever, dude. But if he got five hundred thousand dollars, which may be the cap on this one, I think it's five hundred thousand. Okay. If he got five hundred thousand, or let's say he got three hundred and fifty thousand mm -hmm. dollars, you, Alondra, and I are all paying for that. Mm -hmm. So what could be happening here is a person who was abusing or using meth is getting a big money payout, bucket of money, because someone at CATS decided to leak a test to the media. And that is why he's getting the payout, if, in fact, he was using meth. That, to me, is the troubling thing, right? To me, oh, yeah. and it, it is the greater good, well, I'm willing to pay the three hundred and fifty, the $500,000 because he's no longer controller for CATS. I have to work under the assumption, you say if he was doing meth, Okay. If it was a false positive, I have to work under the assumption that he was, or else an attorney, the level and skill level and talent level She's of good. Bill Craft, She's good. would have led with, here's the... Refuting. She's very good. I know, I, but that, that should be front and center. Right. If you can refute the results of the test, 
that should be front and center and she's good so we give her the benefit of the doubt which only leads me to assume that it wasn't a false positive now that being said if you've got a guy who's doing meth handling your books how much have we already paid in money based off of misplaced decimal points how much have we already paid in money because you got somebody who is in charge of the money that's what a comptroller does and like like often is the case baton rouge wins <sighs> all right we're gonna break here again we'll check your money now <laughs> aren't we and then we'll <laughs> And then we will continue. He's attorney Franz Borgart. We do legally served every Wednesday. It's 646. <laughs> Gaslighting. That was the term I was looking for. Gaslighting. Why are you looking at my cell phone? <laughs> if you love me, you would trust me. How dare you look at my cell phone? That's your answer, Jill Craft. No, that was going. That was going to your now. And then. No, but that the analogy, following that same analogy, that's the argument from the attorney is to say, no, 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 you shouldn't have been looking there in the first place. Therefore, it doesn't count. Have you ever seen the movie Casablanca? It's a classic. Years ago, Bogart? okay, yeah, yeah, where where the, well, the where the, all the world, yeah, the police the chief, money. the police chief who's gambling goes, I'm shocked. I'm shocked to see that there's gambling happening in here. And then the guy walks up, you're winning, sir. Yeah. <laughs> great movie in fact that's one of my favorite movies ever have you seen that movie have you seen Casablanca okay if you're ever dating anyone and they are like hey have you ever seen Casablanca you're like no but I really would like to see it great romantic date right there boom I just helped you out a lot bro so you go to your local blockbuster oh no not anymore and rent <laughs> Casablanca it, uh Netflix is getting rid of DVD I saw that I mean, do you even have okay, DVD? I was shocked you, to know they still had them. Do you have DVD player at your house? We do. In we, fact, we have a DVD player in the house, and somehow a couple weeks ago, I got accidentally turned on, and you could hear the little motor turning, and I couldn't go to sleep because the motor was turning. Did and, you have the remote for it? Huh? Did you have the remote for it? I didn't realize it was on. Oh. Like, I was like, I hear this little humming sound, and it's driving me nuts. So my son, who's your son's age, mm -hmm. just uses a remote control to Apple TV mm -hmm. and just watches, like, Netflix kids stuff. Yeah. This was a fun topic. I didn't expect to get this much out of this oh, topic. No, I, I, I knew this one was going to. Because, like, I, I don't really have a dog in this one. No, but it's, there are so many good questions that apply across the board. And I knew I was going to use the analogy about the text messages. Because <laughs> if you, you shouldn't have seen the drug test. Thank you. I appreciate gas that. Lighting. It's a gaslighting. It, it is. Yeah. All right. Well, look, as a defense attorney, if you do an unconstitutional traffic stop and you find a butt ton of pills, mm -hmm. what am I doing? Oh, this is so unconstitutional. Oh, never mind. He had 6,000 pills. Arr! But, yeah, but that's what I have to do. Right. Right? I Because the pills shouldn't enter into the calculus of the of the constitutionality. It's right. either constitutional or it's not constitutional. Right. You, you search this guy's locker, and he has a severed head, but you're not allowed to— follow up on that because it was an unconstitutional search what are we talking about next hey there's the young fashions chick well, there's the, there you go. Uh, look at this look at this with the shopping carts and the comforters and the are you sure we're of course of course he is i gotta say i i don't they're gonna make her into a karen yeah. they're gonna make her into a karen but i gotta tell you if as a business owner i don't but that's ridiculous like if you can't you cannot see from from the YouTube or the Facebook Live standpoint, mm -hmm. there was like a sea of shopping carts behind this lady's business, right? Yeah. Or it, next I, to this lady's business. So it's uh, she's on uh, Corsi, just east of Sherwood, or I'm sorry, just west of Sherwood. Where the hell is she? There's Lake Sherwood. That's my hood. Lake Sherwood? No, it's not really my hood. No. I'm in the ridge. The Woodlands. No, she's um, basically across the street from Willie's. Um, King of New Orleans. 
Willie's is excellent, by the way. Yeah. I go to Willie's. Uh, yeah. Uh oh. Um, what? I thought we were walking to get to that path. Like, eventually we're going to. You know what I like about a good, better net? Eventually you know, we're going to. Yes. No, we're going to go to Fred's later. You, you know what I like about a good, better Nezra fan? What? Is there's a division of fans of people who just love Better Nezra, and then the original fans who are indignant at the people who love Better Nezra because y'all were there first. Yeah. No, no, no. It, yeah. We loved them when they were like. <laughs> Better Nezra had some, some good hits. Did they make it? Would you say they made it? They made it. Okay. They made it. Willie's is good, by the way. It's like a chime with boiled crawfish and other stuff. Very good service. I'm not supposed to be drinking this coffee. Where is it again? McAllister's? Where? The sandwich? The sandwich place? There's a McAllister's in the same shopping center that has a Jason's. I gotta yeah. tell you, I gotta tell you that. Luck with that shit. I gotta tell you, I go to McAllister's over Jason's Deli. Unless I'm getting the salad bar. Where the hell is? There's an Arby's. I used to like Arby's. Are you on the? Are you on the? Are you on the team for the Mike Johnson and Justin Thompson or whatever they're doing? When I see. See, yeah. Yes, you're on that I did, team. Oh, yeah, I was uh, one of the pulpit talks last Sunday. Yeah. The mission team. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Six fifty two. Talk one hundred seven three of them. WBRP mornings with Brian Haldane rolling right along. It's legally served. We do this every Wednesday. Attorney Franz Borghardt is in. Um, Franz, you you mentioned the uh, when I mentioned the the comparison with the text messages. Uh, you you know you fail a drug test, but you should have never had the drug test. Should have never leaked the drug test. I, I compared that to the text messaging. You, you yeah, like let's, caught philandering. But how you should, dare you get on my phone because you don't trust me? Right. So. <laughs> The term you used, and, and you, you held off phrase. before saying it, the phrase that you used was gaslighting. Yeah. Um, Which it absolutely is. <laughs> it's kind of revealing, though, to think just how often that happens in the legal world. In the criminal justice system, it happens all the time. I, I, yeah. I mean, there's something very unhealthy about that. Well, if I can drop the veil here. Yeah. The problem That's is— That's the whole point of the segment. I know. The problem is, is you're, you are— Makes me uncomfortable to say this. You're absolutely right. But the issue is when you're talking about like constitutional rights in the criminal justice system, there is a sense of, okay, it's better to let a guilty person off if their if their constitutional rights are trampled and violated because what are the what are the what's the purpose of constitutional rights if we're not gonna give them? If we're not gonna and, let and, them have and that's where we get into the gray area, right? right? That's where right. we get into the whole is justice served because someone was able to back in their way into the Constitution as opposed to just following the letter or the spirit of the law. So that that is the problem, is you have competing senses of justice. On the yeah. one hand, someone may get away with doing something. They absolutely did. On the other hand, someone may have their rights, their constitutional rights trampled, which gives us pause because if we do it to Timmy or Susie, what's to stop them from doing it to Brian or Franz or Alondra? So it's mm. it's a competing interest of 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 whatever we consider justices, and your your view of that changes based on where you are. Like if you're the victim of the crime, you don't give two poops about I, I constitutional rights. And if you're living in Baton Rouge and you're like, I am sick and tired of this crime problem. I don't care about your constitutional rights. Well, I want It's not about the constitutional rights. It's the way. It's about the way that an attorney can back in their way into claiming constitutional rights. But you're rights. framing it as a back-ending thing. It is. It's, it's not back-ending, though. It's, it is, when you say back-ending it, it is the exercising and validating of these rights that you have that not me, not the other criminal defense attorneys, but the Supreme Court of the United States has said, this is the deal. This is the trade-off. 
If you violate a suspect, a, a, a criminal's constitutional rights, mm -hmm. there is a consequence to that in our justice system. And that consequence is not a loophole. It's not a back ending. It is, it is your, your justice modifies. Your proof that it's a violation of constitutional rights is based off of an argument. An argument by its very nature is going to back end you into something. You have to put forth the argument and convince somebody well, else. Otherwise, it would just be crystal clear. Well, there sometimes wouldn't be a is. need for attorneys. Some, there would be a scantron. So sometimes with the onset of videos, dash cam, body cameras, which would be a great segue to our next topic, mm -hmm. it is crystal clear. Like, hey, this cop was doing something that he shouldn't have been doing or she shouldn't have been doing. Right. And it's on video. And we caught it on video. And so, yeah. And by the way, these constitutional challenges are not, so, so your listeners, so your viewers know, this is not an easy thing. Getting something thrown out or dismissed on a constitutional basis is not as easy as you might think it is. It is a very high standard. But speaking of videos, mm -hmm. can we really even trust videos anymore? So that's where we're going with this. Because, <laughs> no, no, I know, I know. And that's where this was, whole thing was going to walk up to. Because you could say, for, for a drug test, you could say it was a false positive. For a drug test, you could say they never tested them um, or they shouldn't have tested them in the first place. But for something where you would have an implication, uh, either an audio or video recording of something, we're to the point now with AI and with deep fakes that video isn't going to matter anymore. So it's it's kind of easier when we see most of the deep fakes we see these days are celebrity deep fakes, yep. like on TikTok, where somebody is doing a good Arnold Schwarzenegger or Tom Cruise impression, mm -hmm. and they're doing all sor sorts of zany, goofy stuff. Or they're juxtaposing the actor into another movie that they weren't into. Like, mm -hmm. for example, Arnold Schwarzenegger is Forrest Gump, which is funny. So, I've, here, uh, yeah, I've seen so it. that is easy, right? We know reality. We know that's not really Arnold Schwarzenegger. It becomes more problematic with the deep fake technology when it's like Brian Haldane. And we're like, wait, is Brian Haldane in the middle of a field cow tipping? Is that really Brian Haldane or is that somebody else? And, and how hard is that to do? More to the point, how hard is it to prove? And then you get to the point where you like you have that that meme of the two Spider Mans. Yeah. And you're trying to figure out who's the right one. Right. So I can have, if I'm the one who's accused, I can have uh, a, a an alibi. And now it's up to somebody to believe to believe one versus right. the other. So it's easy if you have an alibi. Is it though? Well, if you have an alibi and you're like, I've got proof positive that I'm in two places so, at once. So here's the here it is. If I have an alibi and I can document and show that that wasn't me, and it's and it's a credible alibi, because what we're really talking about is a credible alibi. Sure. Well, then that creates reasonable doubt. But now, what becomes a credible alibi? I don't know. So I wasn't okay. I wasn't out in that field cow tipping because I was over at let's say Jubin's, and I've got security footage from Jubin's to prove it. Unless the Jubin's footage was his deep fake. Exactly. Right. Now it's my footage versus your footage. Mm. And now we're looking at the exact same thing. And how do you how and, do you build up a defense to and that? You know, you know who wins in this? Who? The lawyers. <laughs> so bad. You shot this. You shot the clerk. Yeah, I shot the I clerk. Shot the clerk. It's my cousin Vinny. Uh, deep fake stuff is only going to get better. And I got to tell you, sitting back doing what I do for a living, and even as a former prosecutor. You're right. The quality of the fake is only right. Going to get the better. deep fake. The mess for us is only going to get worse. Right. I think it's going to make the justice systems. I mean, you're going to have to have the the money it takes to make them is going to become less and less. It, less and less. I, I heard a song by Fake Weekend and Fake Drake, mm. an AI song that was supposed to be, I can 85% believe it was a weekend and 100% believe it was Drake. I mean, like, if you had, done, if you had not told me, I'd been like, that's totally Drake and that's somebody that kind of sounds like The Weekend. And it's I'm 100 percent convinced. Look, and I know we don't have a lot of time. 30 seconds. Look at the look at the Hollywood movies where we see Harrison Ford in a new Indiana Jones movie where he's de-aged yeah. 40 years, yeah. and it doesn't look bad. No, I know. It looks like you're like whoa. I know. It so, means we're not living in the world of Jaws three anymore. Oh, no. He's Attorney Franz Borkhart. We do legally served every Wednesday. We always appreciate the time, man. All right, we've got ABC.